Hey guys, welcome back to All Star Welding. So I know that uh, many of you yesterday took advantage of Harbor Freight's unprecedented sale on these titanium flux 125 welding machines. They were uh, on sale for $99 for one day only. They had a limit of two and uh, based on some of the um, uh, Facebook groups I'm on, especially the uh, Harbor Freight Junkies, which if you're not a member, you need to go check it out. Uh, join up, there's a bunch of really great guys on there. But um, um, I don't want you guys, especially if this is your first machine, you've never welded before, you've heard about how easy these are to uh, use, uh, I don't want you to get frustrated while you're trying to learn. Um, because I want you to take advantage of how wonderful this little machine is. And I'm a professional welder. I weld every day. I have a full-time shop. Uh, I'm mobile. I'm in the shop. I do aluminum, stainless, um, steel, um, you know, you, you name it. And I still use one of these. It is a great machine for uh, just grab, throw it in the back of my truck, run down the street to fix a little handrail that broke off. Or sometimes I got a customer pull up out front, you know, and they'll say, hey, Jason, the uh, uh, muffler hanger on my truck broke and, and my muffler is hitting the ground. Can you fix that up real quick? Yeah, sure. I grab this thing, throw an extension cord out there. I got them fixed up in 10 minutes. Um, but I want you to not get discouraged on learning how to use this so i've got some tips and tricks that we're going to go over and uh because i want you to get you know a good start a good footing on uh using this machine so we got a lot to go over so enough of the intro let's go ahead and get started look one thing that i want to show you really fast i watch a lot of videos about the, the uh, titanium flux 125 and these guys are doing reviews and the first thing they do is they toss the instructions in the trash can and they don't even cover that there's a switch right here and it'll say cold wire feed when you're loading your wire in for the first time or you know after your set after your first spool uh hit this button right here and hold it down and it kills the circuit going to the wire uh, so you don't have an active wire coming out of your gun and it speeds up your drive wheels to load it up really fast but it's you know nobody ever sees that because they're looking at this right here and they're loading their wire in and all that kind of stuff but it's right there and if you read your instruction book it's in there okay guys first things first and I cannot stress this enough and I even when some of the um, you know uh, welding students from the local tech school come out to you know play you know for a day with me, uh, I cannot stress this enough. You have to steady your hand. All right. I don't care if you're doing this or you're doing this or you want to do this. Uh, you know, you can squeeze the trigger with this hand and guide it with this hand. You know, whatever. But the thing that you don't want to do is just have your hand floating out here in the middle of space. And uh, um, I know the manual uh, for this probably says have a stick out of a half inch, maybe three quarter, something like that. I want you to see what my, what my stick out is, see if it'll focus on that. Uh, let me see. Can you see that? That's about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. That's all I do. And I see people with stick out as far as this, three quarters to an inch. And they got their hand floating out here in space. Let me show you what that looks like. That's the results that they're getting by having too much stick out, not steady in their hand, 
and they continue to do this and then they take the machine back and they say oh screw this I'm not going to use this machine and they try to take it back to the store and then they find out that there's a restocking fee so they've already lost 15 20 percent so and then they you know give up I don't want that to happen to you okay so that's my stick out right there I got about about a quarter inch uh, if you can see that that's about quarter inch and uh, uh, so I'm going to show you four techniques right here and and I know I'm not up close to it so I'm going to exaggerate this but I'm going to go back and forth like this just back and forth and uh, you want to pull you want to drag your uh, torch and then on the next one, I'm going to go back and forth like this. I'm going to go forward and then back a little bit, forward and back a little bit, forward and back a little bit. I'm just going to continue like that. Then I'm going to show you little circles. I'm going to go like this, little circles. And then the last I'm going to do where I go forward and I wait. And I go forward and wait, go forward and wait. All right, so that's four techniques I'm going to show you right here. I'm just going to go ahead and do them, and then we'll uh, clean them up and see how they look. And then I want you to notice another thing that I have cleaned, cleaned this. I took the angle grinder with a cutoff wheel, and I, I cleaned up the um, uh, metal that I'm working on. Uh, got the, um, uh, you know, got it all shiny. The last thing that you want to do is be welding on a bunch of rusty metal. And I'm going to show you what that looks like too. But here we go. We're going to do uh, the back and forth like this. Alright, next I'm going to do um, back and forth like this. I'm going to go forward and back a little bit, forward and back a little bit, forward and back a little bit. Okay, on our next example, I'm going to do little circles, little circles like this as I go, as I go along. Some people call them little E's, but uh, I just call them little circles. Okay, so our last example is, uh, somebody call this the whip and pause, but I'm going to come forward and I'm going to stop and, and let that puddle build up and then I'm going to go forward and stop, forward and stop, forward and stop.
right, let me get the uh, uh, wire wheel on the angle grinder, clean these up, and let's take let's take a look at. Them. All right, so let's take a look at this. This right here, with the uh, what a lot of people call bubble gum, or they'll call it bird bird poop, bird do, whatever term you want to use. This is where we did not steady our hand, and we had the stick out about this far. We had an inch and a half of wire sticking out, and we weren't steadying our hand. We just had our working hand out here floating around out in space and it was just going all over the place that looks horrible all right so this one except for that one little spot right there uh this one was the one where i went back and forth just back and forth made a little z z pattern back and forth that looks pretty good i like it All right, this one, uh, let me see. This is the one where I went forward and back a little bit, forward and back a little bit, forward and back a little bit. And every time you go backwards, you're gonna make one of those little, what they call the dimes, you know, little stacks. All right, that's a good looking weld. I like that. All right, this one was the one, I believe, where I did little circles. Okay, and some people call them little E's, but I call them little circles, and I just went around and around like that all the way down. And then this one is the one where I held the trigger down, and I go forward, and I stop, and I let that puddle build up, and I go forward again, let it build up, go forward again, let it build up, just go forward and stop, forward and stop, forward and stop. I think they call it whip and pause, but, uh, and uh, that's just where I tacked, tacked that on. But, uh, you know, that's some good looking flux core wells, especially that one. I really like that one. Uh, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. And that looks good. But this one, where we did not steady our hand, we had our wire all the way out to here. We had two inches of wire sticking out because we're scared to go in there, go into it. You know, get it started and then go in until it's manageable and just do your thing. And it's not really that hard. So let me know in the comments below if you like number one, number two, number three, or number four better let me know what you think okay so we're going to play around with this i just want to show you the difference uh between clean metal and rusty metal uh some people call flux core the miracle welder because a lot of times it really doesn't care the condition of your metal whether you're going on paint I mean, it'll it'll weld pretty much through everything, but this is two really rusted up pieces of metal that I did not clean up, and I just want to hit this for you, and let's see what it looks like.
Okay, let me get the grinder and clean that up. Well, even, <clears throat> even welding on rusty metal, you can see that's not too bad. Uh, there is a little spot right there where there's a hole or porosity, but uh, you can kind of expect that with flux core and with dirty metal. But you know what? That's, that's still a pretty dang good looking weld. And I want you to notice something else. Do you notice that I don't have like a whole bunch of spatter? I don't have a bunch of BBs laying all over the place. I mean, there's some soot, which you're gonna have with flux core. But other than that, I don't have, I don't have a whole lot of spatter. That's because the wire that you use is um, uh, mainly responsible for that. Your technique is responsible for that and uh, the amount of stick out, how close you are to the work, you know, all of that plays a part in uh, how clean your weld is going to be. Uh, anyway, so that was fun and um, I wish you the very best with your uh, Titanium Flux 125 and um, um, again, it's just a matter of getting out there and using it. Uh, you know, get in your shop or garage or wherever you're going to use it and just use it. You know, uh, go to the junkyard or the welding shop, uh, scrap yard, wherever, and just get you some steel and just stick stuff together. <laughs> See what works out for you. See which one of those four techniques works best for you. But really, if you got any questions or any comments, please, please write to me. If you're a subscriber to my channel, you know that I answer every single comment that comes down the line. And I try to do it quickly. And, uh, um, and I really appreciate you guys. And uh, I couldn't be doing this without you. But, uh, you know, again, I don't, I don't do this channel for me. I do it for you. And if you got questions, ask me. I will answer them. Y'all have a good weekend.